Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Gaming Tidicom video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with Vega 20, also known as Vega 7NM. 3D Mark results for these unreleased cards have appeared in the database, so we're going to be analysing exactly what type of details we can ascertain from these leaks then we're going to move over to chris hook that's right yet another former omd employee has decided to take up residency at intel and then we're going to finish the video with some good news actually and that is that gpu prices are starting to stabilize but once again starting things out with amd's 7nm vega so first things first vega 20 also known as the 7nm vega will be appearing in the Radeon Instinct, at least officially. There is, of course, a distinct possibility we may see other variants, for example, the Frontier or the RX64 or Fire Pro or whatever, because ostensibly they all share a very similar board design. But one of the employees who is obviously attesting the die shrunk version of Vega must have forgotten to disable online validation or just simply remove the Ethernet cable, whichever way you prefer, and thus we have some results which have leaked onto the internets. As a very quick reminder, as according to a slide which leaked back in the day, it is of course 7nm graphics 9 architecture, still has 64 compute units, a double rate FP16, half rate DPFP, which of course stands for double precision. It has four stacks of HBM2, meaning up to one terabyte per second of memory bandwidth, up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. And of course, we also see the rumor that it does indeed support PCIe Generation 4, although of course there has been no mention of that in these particular benchmarks. One will notice the device ID of 66A0, and this actually was a device ID that we've seen previously. This was confirmed back in some Linux display driver patches, I believe around a month ago. I think it was like the first week-ish of uh, April. So before we get into the results themselves, it is imperative for us to understand that this is just being uh, understood right now by 3D Mark as a generic VGA device. And it is running on a Ryzen 7 1700. This is not a 2700, once again, it's a 1700. And we can also note that if we look under the graphics card section, a couple of things. First of all, it is only a single card, but it does indeed have 32 gigabytes of memory. We can see 32,768 megabytes, which of course is 32 gigabytes. But there are two rather interesting figures. The first is the clock speed, the core clock specifically, and the second is the memory bus uh, clock. Now my guess is particularly the core clock is being read wrong because I highly doubt it's running at 1000 megahertz. Well actually there's three distinct possibilities. One I highly doubt. One it is actually getting these scores which we'll go into in just a second at 1000 megahertz. The second possibility is that it's running much higher than this. In fact we saw issues with 3 Mark 11 having completely and utterly misread previous AMD cards, for example the Polaris lineup and also the uh, previous Vega cards. So there's also that possibility and it's just kind of plucking number randomly out of the air. And the second is it is running at a thousand megahertz but that's the base clock and it's turboing up much higher and therefore the turbo or boost or whatever you want to call it is not being registered. So I'm obviously pulling figures out my butt here. This is just not saying these figures are genuine, but it could be the base clock is 1000 megahertz. It is an early engineering sample, get into that in a second, and therefore it could be boosting up to like let's say 1600 megahertz. The memory bus clock I'm also somewhat suspicious of, that's considerably higher than what I would have imagined, and that indeed would put it above the memory bandwidth that we should be seeing. But of course, it's also worth noting that it's distinctly possible as well. Okay, enough of that. What about the performance itself? Well, this is where it gets a little tricky. So, using, once again, the basis of knowledge that we have of it's a Ryzen 7 1700, we're looking at a combined score, uh, sorry, 3D Mark score of 19,794 or 19,762. That's depending on whether you go with the slightly earlier or slightly later result. There's about a day between them, at least according to this. And the graphics score is 26,300-ish. So essentially 26,500 points. And we can see that the game tests 
are also within the realms of what you would expect given the scores. So how do these compare with Vega 10? Well, obviously it depends heavily on the model you've got, the driver revision, if you're overclocking, you get the idea. But certainly those cards, whether it's the Frontier Edition or the 64s, would get around the high 20,000. So let's say 27,000 to 29,000 points, possibly slightly more, possibly slightly less, depending on the direction of the wind that day. So what we have, of course, is a entry, or set of entries, actually, to be more specific, which leads a lot down to your imagination. If you're highly optimistic, you would probably say that it is running at very conservative clock speeds. After all, it is still a very early engineering sample. Let's face it, they're not going to be having working cards out until later this year. So this is probably still very early. The drivers are still probably being tinkered with. Therefore, there's still a lot of performance left in the tank. And clock speeds could ramp up another 5, 6, 7, 800 megahertz. That's if you're being rather, you know, very optimistic. The other possibility, of course, is that we're not really seeing that much level of performance increase. And it isn't that at all. And all they're really doing with the 7nm is probably tweaking the clock speeds a little bit but really twe tweaking the architecture to be much more focused on artificial intelligence and, you know, deep learning and that type of thing that AMD have said a dozen times over, and of course cranking up other things like the amount of HBM in the, f in the actual card, and of course also increasing the memory bandwidth there, because as we've seen a hundred times over, Vega is definitely very memory bandwidth starved. Personally, and this is my opinion, this is based upon just these couple of results, I think the... I think the result is probably going to be somewhere in the middle. I think that they are probably going to make some architecture changes. I do think, however, the additional memory uh, clock speed or memory bandwidth actually is probably a better way to describe it. It's definitely going to help the card. I definitely think that's going to definitely um, raise up the performance a bit. However, without us really knowing what the clock speed is, it's incredibly difficult to actually put a decent um, performance figure on this. Instead, how I would take these results is, A, it's positive that they actually have the things working, and of course this is also backed up by the fact that they have said that they're testing it in the labs. So what this basically does is it doubles down on that and says that yes, they have, yes, the cards are at the very least in this very early engineering phase where they've not even got the drivers tweaked, let alone the silicon itself. Uh, still pretty much competing with the last generation. So in my opinion, we're probably going to see a nice improvement in performance. There are a couple of things that I want to also mention real quick regarding this topic. The first is that there's apparently a lot of movement in AMD to create a Zen-like GPU. What that means, your guess is as good as mine, the essentially it's probably going to be like a building block type of thing just like how zen you know it can be a zen cpu can be cobbled together oh sorry a ryzen cpu can be cobbled together with different zen ccx blocks i'm going to assume that's going to be the case there's a couple of theories one is that we're going to get that uh zen uh, gpu between now and navi or the second is that navi is essentially going to be almost the zen like gpu there's two different theories on that and the last one is I wouldn't be surprised if we did see a gaming orientated version of this. But to be honest, it really, to me, depends on the release date uh, of when we're going to see Navi. And of course, it looks like the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox 2 or whatever it's going to be called are definitely going to be utilizing a Navi based GPU. And we've seen numerous reports that, well, 7nm is going to be critical, of course, to the components within those uh, systems so it's going to be very interesting from the perspective of amd speaking of pers uh, interesting from the perspective of amd let's talk about chris hook shall we so it is around mid this month at april for those who are watching this in some distant part of the future that chris hook departed from amd now he had of course a pretty decent position at the company he was not someone who was in a low-end position at all he was the senior director and global product marketing at amd so he had been at the company for a long 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 time he was there like 2000 2001 something like that so originally there was a post from chris that said that he was going to be having a break before he moved on to a different company well yeah yeah turns out he has moved on to a new company what is that well it looks like he's intel and in fact by it looks like it is um he has a facebook page which has been updated 
uh, with a pre-formatted post saying he started a new job at Intel. And he is now the discrete graphics marketing at Intel's office at Santa Clara. And he will now be working on that as an executive at Intel. And um, he has also updated his position on Twitter, which is at GChip, just for your... Uh, just for your FYI, and he is referred to as Intel's, or describes himself as actually, Intel discrete graphics car, semiconductor slash tech enthusiast, snowboarder, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so now, of course, we have three, three employees that have now, uh, I guess the best way of describing it would be jump to ship from AMD to, of course, Intel. The first was Raj al who, of course, was instrumental in some of the decisions regarding AMD's uh, GPUs, but now he is supposedly going to be working on an Intel GPU. We'll get into that in a second. Then, most recently, Jim Keller, although I would argue he's not necessarily an, in an AMD guy. He, of course, actually left AMD to work at Tesla, and then Tesla, he I don't know what he did. It seems like he barely had time to unpack his pencils from his case, and then, of course, he was nabbed by Intel. And now... Well, we've got Chris Hook. What's rather interesting here, of course, is that Intel are working on their own discrete GPU. We know that without any question. Uh, Intel have confirmed that. And what we don't know too many rumors. All we know is that they are making very heavy investments in this, de in, in this particular department. So it's going to be uh, various things, actually. The first is it's, of course, going to work for... Uh, sort of be really good for artificial intelligence, blockchain, whatever, high performance computing kind of territory. You imagine GPUs being great at, well, that's what AMD, that's what of course Intel want to uh, start definitely getting a piece of, but also it's going to be very instrumental in gaming as well because you know, in some, in some uh, circles, gaming is almost like the the, oh, and also gaming, but that, of course, vastly undersells and understates just how important and how how vital gaming is. There's a reason that NVIDIA are still pushing GeForce as hard as what they are, despite the fact that they're making Boku bucks in the data center. It's, it, gamers want the latest GPU, and there's, you know, millions of us who are purchasing these things. So it's going to be very curious to me exactly what's going to be happening here. Um... <laughs> I've actually seen a couple of jokes at this point that Intel should just have a, a division in their company that pretty much just reads AMD inside. I mean, seriously, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, I imagine it's from uh, Intel's perspective that, and by the way, when I say Intel's perspective, I mean, let's say you're a long-standing Intel employee. It must be kind of weird that essentially guys who are working for the competition are now in some ways making some of the policy in the company, particularly Raja Akhadori. And it makes me wonder if Raja, and I'm speculating here, this is not based upon some rumour that's or some source that's whispered in my ear, but I do wonder if it was Raja Akhadori who has been spearheading some of these acquisitions and, or personnel being acquisitions. Mighty curious. Anyway, final piece of news, and this is actually a really good thing, whether you're an NVIDIA fan, an Intel fan, or... Uh, NVIDIA fan, whatever. And that is that GPU prices are becoming affordable. So a short time ago, I did cover the fact that DigiTimes had reported that certain vendors such as MSI and Gigabyte were expecting the shipments of GPUs to go down about 40% month, month over month. And of course, there's a reason behind that. And it is cryptocurrency. Essentially, cryptocurrency has been losing some of its momentum. Plus, there is now dedicated mining ASICs which are due out over the next several months. So you have like a twofold effect. One, because of some bad news in the cryptocurrency markets, although they are somewhat rebounding, that stops some of the mining. Plus, of course, you've got the fact that it's now harder. So folks who only had a couple of GPUs and perhaps were buying a third are looking at their electricity bill and saying, eh, with the price of the GPUs at the moment, not so much, my friend. And of course, you've got also the larger scale farms, which 
I've gotten to the point where they're like, you know what, maybe we should just wait for the ASICs to be released. So what we have now, and this is an article at VentureBeat, I'll link it in the video description, is the fact that you've actually got graphics cards like the 1080, which is now selling for about six to $700. And as a small little by the way, I actually happen to be checking GTX 1080 and a couple of other card prices uh, this morning in the UK because a friend of mine wants to purchase one and uh, that actually does seem to be pretty much within the UK as well. Prices are definitely down. You still have some cards like the Thai, which is definitely more expensive than what it once was, but the prices definitely come down some. And it's no longer, you know, your left kidney plus the firstborn child of everyone you've ever known and loved. It's now getting to a more manageable level. So I guess the question is, should you buy now? Well, here's the thing. I can't answer that accurately. And I know that's a pretty much a useless statement, but I'm trying to give you a little food for thought here. The reason I bring this up is because some people are saying, well, okay, we'll just wait and the cards will go down further in price. Unfortunately, there always could be another resurgence in the cryptocurrency market. Or, conversely, the other option is that another coin appears entirely. Or... And this one is pretty um, pretty simple. You could have the 11 series GPUs being released for NVIDIA. So you've got to decide really what the best option is. So obviously if the cryptocurrency market starts to rebound, then the price is going to go up astronomically again in theory. On the other hand, if it doesn't, or worse, the 11 series comes out, then you also could be kicking yourself. My whole thing, honestly, uh, I, I, know, I know I'm one of those people who generally suggests waiting, um, and so you can probably guess what I'm going to say, but I'd probably suggest waiting unless you really need a new card. So for, let's say you've got, I don't know, like a, a GTX 970, and you've just hooked your PC up to a new 4K television or something, then I can definitely see the logic behind perhaps going with like um, a new card that without any question I can definitely see you being compelled to do so particularly like it's not it's not like you know that the 11 series is going to be released in like three weeks time but I'm just warning you that if the cards do come out you will be kicking yourself but simultaneously of course there's the chance that this is like the 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 port in the storm this is like the, the eye of the hurricane and the prices could shoot back through the roof and if they do that's going to be very harmful for the 11 series launch at least in my personal opinion with all of that said hopefully you've enjoyed the video i'll see you soon take care bye for now